Welcome again to Nefertube Online Lectures. In this lecture, I will discuss <coughs> immunoglobulin and the complement mediated glomerular diseases with membrane of glomerular nephritis pattern of energy injury according to the latest TKDU guidelines. As always, I say that uh, the PowerPoint of uh, our lectures are present at nephrotube.com. The videos in English and Arabic languages are both available at Nephrotube YouTube channel. And uh, please follow us on Twitter, Facebook page, and Facebook group for more activities. The first point that I have to mention <coughs> that the terminology of membranoproliferative glomerular nephritis is not considered as a disease. There is no disease called the membranoproliferative glomerular nephritis. Membranoproliferative glomerular nephritis is a light microscopic pattern of kidney injury. It is not a disease. So the old nomenclature of MPGN type 1, type 2, type 3 shouldn't be used again. When you find MPGN in the pathology, this is not indicated, indicating a specific disease. It is indicating a specific pattern with multiple etiology that I have to search about. That's why the work group of KDU guidelines suggest, suggested eliminating the term MPGN from the new glomerular disease guidelines and classify the causes of this pattern into three major categories. If you find MPGN pattern of injury, we will classify this pattern etiology according to the type of the deposits. If the deposits are of immunoglobulins plus minus complement, so this is immunoglobulin, immune complex mediated MPGA, MPGN pattern of injury. And you have to exhaust yourself to find the cause of this pattern, which may be monoclonal gammopathies, infections, autoimmune diseases, and finally it may be idiopathic if you didn't find any cause for the deposits. The of the the deposits in the pathology may be only complement, complement mediated. Here it is an immunoglobulin mediated plus or minus complement. Here only it is complement mediated, so we'll, uh, <clears throat> we will say that it is a complement mediated MPGN pattern. Maybe due to C3 uh, deposits or C4 deposits, and each one of them divided into C3 or C4 dense deposit disease or GN dense deposit disease. We say if the we say that term if the deposits are in a recon shaped pattern and C3 GN or C4 GN if it is scattered not a, a, in a recon shaped pattern. The pattern or the third cause of, of the pattern. You will find the MPGN pattern under the microscope, but you will not find immunoglobulins or complement. This may be caused by antiphospholipid syndrome, HUS team, especially the recovery uh, in the phase of recovery, sickle cell anemia, polycythemia, and many other causes. So, broadly speaking, we can classify MPG, MB, uh, MPGN patterns according to etiology, both the immunoglobulin complement mediated and the negative immunoglobulin negative uh, here is immunoglobulin immune complex mediated complement mediated without any deposits <clears throat> we uh, talked about these this according to we have different causes and different mutations in the complement that may precipitate complex deposits and here you will find it is infection autoimmune disease monoclonal gammopathy fibrillary glomerular nephritis and finally it may be idiopathic so this is the main idea the main idea of the classification let's talk about special points first i will start by positive immunoglobulin mediated immune complex mediated here, you have to know that idiopathic pattern of MPGN is not common. So when you have a patient with MPGN pattern, positive immunoglobulins plus minus complement, you have to exhaust yourself to find the cause. Because idiopathic MPGN pattern is not common. Even if, or even that, even that, if you have a patient with MPGN, positive immunoglobulin plus minus complement 
and you didn't find complement deposits, infection, or autoimmune disease cause, before considering that the patient idiopathic, you have to exclude complement dysregulation. Because complement dysregulation, in some, in some situations, especially cyst 3 glomerulopathy, may appear under the microscope the same pattern as the same pattern of positive immunoglobulin immune complex mediated. So, here, as I am saying, idiopathic is not common. If no etiology is discovered, you have to evaluate for complement dysregulation and the drivers of complement dysregulation. And if you didn't find any of them, so you have to consider it as idiopathic MGM. So common dysregulation may occur in immunocomplex glomerular disease. Conversely, C3 glomerulopathy may look like an immunocomplex mediated GN, especially if it is triggered by infection. So complex medi immune com uh, complex mediated, if it is precipitated by infection, can be presented by an immune complex mediated shape of MPG. Okay. And finally, if you didn't find any cause, you will consider if it is a eubasic after exclusion of complement dysregulation and drivers of complement dysregulation. How to uh, discover or investigate for abnormal complement dysregulation along of uh, lab uh, genetic pattern that are not available in most of the places present only in specialized centers and its importance mainly uh, is due to uh, its helpness in the prediction of recurrence after transplantation because because some genetic abnormalities has uh, have a high rate of recurrence after transplantation and some are not let's talk about complex mediated part some consideration for c3 glomerulopathy before you diagnose the patient as c3 glomerulopathy you have to exclude infection and you have to exclude monoclonal gammopathy if the patient is 50 years or more. Again, before diagnose the patient as complement mediated, the patient has complement deposits before saying that the patient is complement mediated, you have to exclude infection and exclude monoclonal gammopathy if the patient is 50 years or older. Okay. Monoclonal gammopathies can initiate C3 glomerulopathy without glomerular deposits of immunoglobulins. That's why we have to exclude them. An important point for the pathologist. An important point for the pathologist. Uh, sometimes the monoclonal immunoglobulins may be masked and uh, not appear during a routine immunofluorescence investigation so the pathologist must use proteolytic digestion on the paraffin embedded biopsy to detect monoclonal immunoglobulins this in any in any uh, trial of discovering monoclonal immunoglobulins do not miss the diagnosis and if there is no infection or monoclonal gammopathy you will have to search you, you, you have to search for the, as we said before, the genetic abnormalities and the mutations in the complement and the drivers, medi mediators and regulators of the complement pathway. Okay, let's talk about treatment. First, the treatment of new complex mediated glomerular nephritis of known cause. Of known cause, we will treat the cause. If it is an autoimmune disease, you have to treat an autoimmune disease. Monoclonal gammopathy, you will treat it. Infection, you will treat infection and so on. But what about treatment of immunocomplex complex glomerular nephritis without unknown cause? With unknown cause, you have to try glucocorticoids plus minus immunosuppression based on the severity of the disease. And we have here we have here what is the condition and how to treat. All the lines of treatment and the main ideas of treatment depends on the supportive care, the, the raspolocade, uh, 
the use of glucocorticoid cyclophosphamide in a crescent glomerulonephritis, glucocorticoid, and whatever the immunosuppressive therapy in patients with abnormal EGFR and proteinuria and active urinary sediment. No specific treatment or clear treatment or clear statement for what to use and what which before which in, in these cases. So you have to try. And finally, if the patient didn't respond to treatment, the patient must be should be considered for a clinical trial where available. Okay, what about treatment of C3 glomerulopathy? If the patient is diagnosed as C3 glomerulopathy with proteinuria more than one gram per day and or declining in kidney function over six months, we will start by MMF, microphonate mumfetil plus glucocorticoids. And if not responding, eclizumab may be considered which is very expensive. And if the patient is not responded to MMF, glucocorticoids, and eflizumab, the patient should be considered for a clinical trial. I hope that I summarized the uh, guidelines in very brief uh, lines. Thank you for watching, and see you again in the next lecture.